Thank you. So yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here and thank you for having me here. So in fact, we wanted to do a, a double presentation together with Abel Packer, who works for Cielo, which is a Brazilian publishing platform. And uh, uh, it's a colleague of us and a, a, collaborator, a collaborator of us. And, uh, and when I say us, I mean Open Edition and All Press. And the Open Edition is also another publishing platform operating in uh, France. I'm based myself in Marseille, but I work more precisely for Opress, which is the, let's say, corresponding uh, European uh, infrastructure uh, for scholarly communication. And I will go into these details right now. And so the, <clears throat> uh, yes, yeah, so to explain a bit, uh, what we do and intend regarding the... On the... I think you're not sharing your slides at the moment. No, 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 I was just speaking. Okay, fine, okay, good. All right, sorry, just wanted to make sure you knew. Yes. Yes, so... Um, I will explain uh, the relationships with, with all the, these um, infrastructures. You can see my slides right now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Thank yes, you. Perfect. So yes, uh, I will talk to you a bit about the PIDs for scholarly communication infrastructures specifically, and uh, as you will see later specifically even its uh, infrastructures operating in the social sciences and humanities environment. So like I said uh, just briefly before uh, discussing, I wasn't sure what was the expectation. I understand that it's the, the end also of the conference. So I remain uh, rather broad and simple. And if you want to ask for more details, uh, you can see that after the Q&A session, knowing that I don't manage all the technical aspects of PID implementations, here I will speak more about options, strategies, and also constraints uh, of um, PID's implementation in our various contexts. So, uh, like I said, uh, I work at Open Edition uh, and for Opress. So first, let's start with Open Edition. It's a uh, French research infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that um, provides that provides and maintain four publishing platforms dedicated once again to, for, to the SSH. And we have first uh, two main uh, platforms for traditional publications like journals and books. As you can see in, in the slides, um, we started from the journals uh, and then we also developed a platform for the books because this is an important type of communication in the field of the SSH, the monographies. Um, the numbers are growing. You can see here the numbers of journals and books that we have currently on these two platforms. We also have two other platforms uh, on uh, other kinds of uh, scholarly communication uh, objects. Uh, the first one, calendar, uh, lists uh, scientific events like conferences, uh, summer schools, and, and that sort of things. And uh, we also added uh, uh, some years ago another platform, uh, this one dedicated to scientific blogs that, that can be uh, <clears throat> held by individual researchers or by uh, research teams and uh, projects also. Here. And the, you can already see that we have a high, rather high variety of data types and uh, and uh, also that uh, they contain all the, the different level of uh, granularity. They all have also different uh, statuses, I would say, even from the copyright point of view, because for instance, uh, scientific events are, and uh, the responsibility of open edition itself, it's not the case for the journals, uh, which are the, the books, which are uh, the property of the, of the, the publishers and uh, for which Open Edition only provides a platform for dissemination. So the, the, within this variety, precisely PIDs has had an important role to play. 
this was the level uh, of open edition. Uh, open edition is involved also in some of the European research infrastructure operas, which is uh, research infrastructure for open scholarly communication in the SSH. It uh, concerns mainly publications, but there is also a connection with the research data and more and more. So the missions of open edition and operas are uh, course, similar, they intend to ensure the access uh, to SSH outputs and to, at the level of OPRAS especially, the idea is to uh, do that in a comprehensive way and to improve the SSH scholarly communication as a whole, that is considering the uh, communication as a cycle that includes the research data cycle, and at least to some extent starting from data discovery, then moving to communication with peers. Here we can think about the online annotation tools, for instance, and then moving to the more traditional publishing cycles, peer reviewing, editing, and then uh, dissemination back again into the cycle of discovery. So uh, OPRAS is uh, coordinated by the French infrastructure of an edition, uh, more on the side of the, of the publication, and it is coordinated also by, the, by another um, um, French uh, infrastructure, more dedicated, this one, to um, precisely research data. And we have uh, gathered a uh, consortium to, uh, um, to lead uh, all press of uh, 43 partners, uh, numbers growing, as far as I know, and uh, from, from 16 countries in, in, in Europe, but also with collaborations uh, outside Europe, precisely, for instance, with uh, Cielo uh, Abel Packer and uh, also Erudy in Canada, if you have heard uh, about them. So, this is a level of our press, just to uh, give you maybe then uh, another view about the context and the environment of our press. So, it is a uh, European uh, infrastructure. Uh, um, moving towards uh, also the status of uh, an ERIC, uh, comparable to other ERIC uh, in Europe and in the SSH environment. And you can see more or less, I think, in the slide that uh, OPRA takes place in an environment where uh, various collaborations are possible. So you, you have networks such as Spark Europe and EA SSH, and you have also other projects like uh, Shock and um, more specifically other ERICs, uh, European Infrastructure Consortium for the SSH within Europe, and that is Clarin, CESDA, and Daria. And all of them uh, working together, trying to make a common effort to uh, contribute to the building of the European Open Science Cloud. And even there, of course, uh, in the uh, findability aspects of uh, the principles and among these, the PIDs will have a major role to play. So this is an important focus also for all press. Another thing that I mentioned, this was at the European level, another thing to, to mention is the connection with more international networks, and because I will mention that quickly at the end of the presentation, uh, all press is also involved in, to, in the activities of GoFair, which, uh, as you may know, is an organization uh, leading the implementation of FAIR principles somehow at a global level. And uh, OPERAS uh, is coordinating activities also in that area. So, this um, were some information about my context of work and uh, also uh, Importantly, about the context of our implementation of PIDs in, uh, in our projects. So, um, just to put the, the, the first terms of the discussion regarding the PIDs in our context. So, um, there is uh, some kind not of tension, but <clears throat> um, and mix of uh, uh, orientations in the, uh, in the implementation of PIDs in between uh, what is uh, evidently useful for uh, 
for, for on a specific work on specific tasks and what is useful specifically in our you know, environment also and so uh, in our case uh, of course you know, when we operate in scholarly communication um, the PIDs are important first for visibility uh, objectives and the dissemination implies that we ensure a persistence access to to the content and also the connection uh, with the referencing uh, tool that works uh, efficiently. That's for that, the, the PIDs are uh, useful also because, of course, they are also the first step for reuse. And by reuse, we, we can intend it here in various ways. It's uh, the reuse just to be re-read uh, by many people, but also, as you know, publication can be used as uh, data to constitute corpora. So, this is the, the, the first aspect of it. From another point of view, in our specific case, they, they are even more than useful, than necessary, because um, the, the assertion environment is rather fragmented in them. Uh, many small uh, actors, small publishers, but also small organizations sometimes, uh, most of the time uh, linked to very specific national or even regional um, contexts and uh, precisely to be able to make the connection between all these actors required to have some uh, sustainable and persistent uh, link uh, to establish between all of them. So th this is, uh, let, let's say, from the internal point of view, all the interest that we could find and that we do find into the PID implementations. It is also to be noted that it is a part of a set of recommendations uh, that sometimes, are, at least at the generic level, goes, go, all go in the same direction. And uh, this is especially the case uh, for with the FAIR principle, the linked open uh, perspective, and the, the open science perspective also. But for instance, in the case of uh, planets, which is the plan that is supposed to <coughs> uh, better organize the, the precisely the openness and the accessibility of um, research publications, uh, regarding mainly articles, the, the PID's implementation is more uh, mandatory than only uh, recommended. So uh, it is useful on one hand, but on the other end, uh, <coughs> it's um, uh, it's also a constraint and something that we should move forward. And in fact, uh, this is what happened last uh, lately in an open edition. And uh, here I put as a title this as a main question, question for us, the, the selection uh, of um, an appropriate uh, PID system. So here I list just some of them, DOI, ARC, HANDLE. The fact is that, um, so you've seen that open edition exists in quite, quite a, long, a long time now, and the PIDs are part of the added value services uh, of the open edition platforms. But we didn't have, we do not have, uh, and even now, 100% uh, coverage. And not all our, our documents, not all our data, I would say, uh, have already had a, <clears throat> a PID. And uh, with the FAIR context, and I should have put also the Plan S precisely context, um, we decided to conduct a first, uh, let's say, FAIR uh, assessment of the, our data according to the FAIR principles in order to match with the Plan S expectations, and that is to move towards 100% coverage of the open edition data. And uh, like I was more the same before, but here maybe more precisely, um, the PIDs will be um, an improvement of the service for the, for the users if all the documents and all the data has, uh, all the documents have PID, but also internally precisely this time, not only for the documents that are published with all the data and from the information system point of view, having uh, PIDs will be also an improvement internally this time. And this is especially the case you know, for the management of the deleted reports, for which we don't have uh, a clear process uh, for now. So this will improve the data dissemination on one, on one hand, and also the data management on the other hand. 
And here we uh, face the challenges. For, so first, there is the, the, the cost, uh, because the PIDs that we had until now uh, were the DOIs, DOIs from Crossref. And, uh, and this was one of the, 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 the impediments to equip all our data and documents with uh, DOIs. There was also precisely in the strategy to establish the problem of the technical assessment of existing PID systems. It's uh, from an external point of view, and even with uh, some good technical skill uh, within the team, Open Edition uh, is, uh, has uh, a team. We are about 50 people working at Open Edition. So we have the skills, but we remain a small team. It, it isn't always easy to uh, compare, really compare the uh, different PID systems. We ended up with uh, uh, consulting uh, comparison between various system, the PID systems made by Clarin, the, uh, Eric in linguistics I mentioned before, uh, but actually it was less an analysis than a description. And uh, when it comes to implementation, you, you need to do to know more precisely what are the, the implications of uh, these um, implementations. And uh, it's not just always easy to do because, of course, it's, they're not always uh, strictly comparable. So, uh, more, uh, maybe more interestingly, for a potential discussion, the fact that we, our final choice, which we will start to implement. Uh, beginning of this year, is to have a mix, actually, uh, of uh, different PIDs. So for the document, let's say, that is mainly the, the, the document that, is, that are published in the platforms, we will use DOIs, uh, a mix even here of Crossref and data side DOIs. And uh, for all the data, uh, we will use the handle system instead, uh, because with this one, we'll be able for uh, a minimal cost to equip all our data with handles. And uh, yes, this is uh, what we decided um, to do. And uh, yes, it's uh, an ongoing work. So, but it's in the, <clears throat> like I said, it was um, uh, a strategy uh, established considering uh, both the uh, utility and the constraints. At the level now of operas, it's a bit different because operas uh, works actually as a distributed infrastructure and then that is um, it gathers various um, organizations, infrastructures, publishers, platforms that uh, can provide specific services in the same way or uh, contribute to the building of a single service. Uh, here I will mention only the case of our uh, discovery platform, which is called GoTriple. And uh, GoTriple will uh, get the data, uh, that is metadata actually, on research data and on academic publications from various sources. So it could be sources from one hand uh, from the community of OPRES, the consortium of OPRES, but it will be also uh, metadata coming from uh, other aggregators, such as OpenAir, for instance, or Europeana, which are still in our perimeter of uh, uh, SSH uh, research. And um, <clears throat> so the, the, in that case, we, we, will, we have established a rather flexible data model to do to ensure that we will be able to gather as much data as possible, but with some minimal requirements. And the first of them, of them, of course, are the PIDs. And uh, this one, this service is uh, maintained by uh, Menu precisely, and they have the possibility to generate uh, PIDs in the case the, the, the data sources don't have it, uh, of them, the PIDs. And so we would have uh, a technical solution for the case of uh, the uh, research data, data, whatever, uh, lacking PIDs. But the, the, the fact is, 
also the experience shows <coughs> because <coughs> uh, Gotripon is based on an existing uh, platform that these PIDs are rarely used by uh, the people uh, actually and uh, in, and it is related also with the case uh, with the problems of the updates because then if uh, it's the aggregator providing the uh, the PID then you need to have a, a channel to communicate with them to uh, take back the, to do take back the ID and then to update the I know. I'm just gonna, uh, well, I was just going to say, we do have a question or two, so um, okay, we, I don't see we have about sorry. five minutes left to go, so I just want to make sure that that we have time for you to answer that question is all. But if you're nearly at the end, please, please do finish. Yes, so. my, there is only one, two slides after that. Please, I will, I will be just so please, please, please um, um, finish them off and then we, we will ask you this one question. I'm, I'm afraid Abel is unable to join us. I'm, I'm sorry, Arno, and I'm sorry, everyone. Um, technical uh, issues. Okay, now I just finished quickly then. So, <clears throat> uh, so yes, and then there is also the question, yes, of the multiple DOIs because the we will gather data from uh, many sources and sometimes when you have, especially in the case of publications, at least you have publications publicated on various, published in various uh, platforms and you can have uh, DOIs for the same resource in that case, and we don't know exactly how to manage that already. So this is uh, for all press. And then we also have, as like I said before, um, activities within uh, GoFair. So we have a GoFair implementation network, which is called OPRES, and dedicated this for the to the verification uh, of uh, SSH data and publication. And uh, here it changes a bit the prospect because we are working together both with researchers and data managers. And so I put here in the title uh, a question that was raised once and uh, in one of these workshops we made with researchers and data managers. We can see that some researchers uh, are still rather far off all these uh, technical implementation aspects. And you can say that it is okay, that it is a task of the infrastructures of the uh, organization. And it is, in fact, in the perimeter of the infrastructures. But of course, if there are no connection, no communication between uh, both, then uh, <clears throat> you cannot ensure that the researcher will at least uh, uh, make sure that his data, his, uh, his or her data, will have key ideas. And uh, yes, and uh, this also relates with the question uh, precisely uh, of the moment in which you put PIDs on the, the data when you enter into the storage process. So I go quickly to the end and uh, yes, something, just the final slide. So. Uh Stop me if you. <laughs> well, I, I, we we just have a couple of minutes, so I think maybe if we if we leave this slide up just for a minute, so people can can read it, and we since this is a a popular question, um, I uh, the I'd just like to ask you: Should do you feel sh funders should enforce open metadata and deposition by publishers um, to, for example, cross reference data set site in the same way that they mandate open access, or should they continue to just recommend? Oh, they don't all even recommend, but uh... yeah, uh, in the, 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 there are probably uh, precisely. I was mentioning uh, planners. I was also involved in a in a survey uh, mandated by um, by planners uh, consortium. I think the, the, the type of organization still the, um, about the what we call the diamond publishers or the, the diamond publishing, the journals and then that is the, the, the one rely on small teams and uh, they, they can these one these uh, publishers cannot um, afford themselves the, to, to have pids and then they need to have uh, uh, an infrastructure and making agreements uh, for them and we, we've seen that in some cases the case with cielo for instance uh, Abel Becker, but, I have, but i've told you that uh, much better than myself, but there are specific agreements. And in fact, if you make the the, 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 the PIDs in the, uh, 
that requirement, then we have to ensure that everybody can really afford it. And then there yeah. is also the question of the, what there is here in the last slide, of the DOIs as a de facto standard. Because when you see the ESC interoperability framework, they, they mention all the types of, uh, of PIDs. Uh, we have handled the R, for instance. But actually, in the context of telecommunication, yeah, you, you cannot have to, to use the DOIs. Yeah, thank you. If, uh, interestingly, we had uh, Juan Pablo Aparin of PKP was um, speaking as a plenary last night and he made a similar kind of point. So, yeah, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Arno. Thank you especially for, I'm very sorry that Abel was unable to join us. Um, I think we're, we're all very sorry that Abel was unable to join us. We're going to see um, if there's another way of um, hearing from him after the event, because obviously we would have very much like to hear the CLO perspective as well as the Opera's perspective. Yes, I'm perspective. very sorry to have been so long. I, I didn't. No, 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 no. Thank you. We are very grateful to you. Um, and please um, feel free to stick around for the next session.